Welcome again to the narrative where it's okay to be curious, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell for future video uploads and drop a comment. Let's talk about track and field. Track and field, I think, is underwhelming this season. Even with all the events going on, all the different meets, all the different invitationals, it is still underwhelming. And it's mostly in part to the fact that we are not seeing a lot of clashes between the top performers we are not seeing rivalries and we are not seeing head-to-head -head clashes between the top ranking athletes in the world from since the olympics we haven't seen marcel jacobs defending anything he hadn't run a race and allow anybody else to size up against him we haven't seen elaine thompson here this year last year we have seen elaine thompson sharika jackson we have seen shelly and fraser they, it was a showdown year last year and the crazy thing about it is that it kind of created a little rivalry and you saw people taking sides and it, it's good for the sports and not necessarily good for the athletes because all of the persecution that the athletes get it goes against their brand now it seems like the athletes they're in brand saving mode so if they're going out there running races losing races winning races injuring themselves it goes against them but if they just show up if they show up in public to the supermarket it goes it, it's good for it's good for the sport right it's good for those people who are making commentaries it's good for just seeing them how they walk they are being scrutinized they're under a microscope so the athletes they have to protect themselves they have to be safe they have to be sure about what they are doing they have to be sure about the next event that they're gonna be involved in however for themselves they are not necessarily paid well from when you do the math if they are not in some very big events like the world championship or the olympics or maybe if they don't win the diamond league they will not necessarily get paid so there are a lot of reasons why these athletes don't need to put themselves out there they're not incentivized to do so and this is mostly in part to the fact that they don't make a lot of money even though they have to train as hard i remember one time you saying bolt and a Safa power they were saying that they literally train 11 months per year only to get get a break for one month and even in that one month or maybe two months when they get a break they are still under the microscope because if they decided to take a drink if they decided to party and have a good time then they would have been scrutinized for just having fun and being human now that we have seen these superstars exited the sport, we miss them and we are saying that these athletes um we won't we won't know what we have until we lose them right even in the form of shelly and fraser price and elaine thompson hira they are still active athletes but we are not seeing them and this is part of the reason why the sport is as boring now as it is i'm not saying that the athletes who are putting in the work are boring it's just that the fact that we are not seeing any head-to-head -head, any clashes it makes it underwhelming at the moment there is anticipation when we hear that this athlete may be showing up to perform and then it just get dropped on its face and even then the events are set up such that the big name athletes they still find a way to evade another big enough name athlete so we're not seeing head-to-head -head, um in the sport and it makes it less it makes it less than what it could be it seems like the athletes they are saving the best times for the biggest event and only to find out that right around the time of the biggest event they are injured so that's another problem for the sport that's another problem for the fans that's another problem overall for track and field oh ultimately the athletes they are not paid properly they are not they are not incentivized well and they don't need to show up they don't need to clash they don't need to create rivalries because the the incent the money is not there to match the effort now if you take a look at champs for example champs have a rivalry the rivalry is school rivalry the, the rivalry could be where you have one superstar from a little school somewhere in jamaica who want to dethrone the the big name school superstar and that create a major buzz in jamaica the seniors somehow it's they find a way to evade each other even though they could build the sport and build the brand around themselves they continuously find a way to evade each other and rightfully so let's talk about how they could build the sport and the brand around themselves now it, there are three major female athletes in jamaica 100 meter female athletes and they are in different camps and we have and they have other athletes in their camps as well these camps could develop their own rivalries and having this kind of rivalries they could 
they could charge according to, to, to the rivalry, the kind of the kind of audience that they pull, they should be able to reach out to the media house and strike a deal and say, okay, if we are deciding that we're going to create, we're going to set up an event where all three of us are going out there to put on a show, a rivalry, then we need to get a, cer a certain percentage of the fee, whatever comes out. And then the, if the fans know that this kind of fee will a part of it will directly go to the athletes that they like they would support i'm seeing these these um events like for example the racers track the racers grand prix i like the idea of the racers grand prix but with the media house charging and it's not the media house. i don't think the media house deserve it as much as the athletes so if we know that the athletes would be getting a direct percentage from this as a partner then we as the fans would say all right let's pay for it we can't go to the event the media house is bringing it the athletes are making themselves available let's pay for it because right now even with the media houses um broadcasting the event they can't they don't they can't bring the athletes the athletes are not incentivized and the athletes will be will the athletes are monetized at every turn if they decide to go to the supermarket in a sandals they will be monetized they will be scrutinized they will be criticized some of them would be lauded and applauded for their outfit outfit some of them would be lauded and applauded for just how they walk while some will be criticized just for the limp that they probably have on that day so the athletes they have to protect themselves naturally they need the rivalry so that they can have their own group of fans and with most of the superstars concentrated in jamaica it makes it difficult for world athletics overall because if the united states had a superstar athlete that they can that they could market and they could build a buzz around they would be inviting the, the jamaican superstars to come and run against them and pay them for it but with jamaica having the superstars they can't really invite anybody to come to jamaica to run against the superstars because they can't afford to pay them as a result the, the the meets are underwhelming they're they're borderline boring we kind of know what is going to happen before it even happen with the athletes that we see um the athletes who are dominating right now the talos the shari the, Sh the shakari richards the um hubs you know the, the the different athletes who get a win here and there and i'm, I'm direct i'm mostly talking about the marquee events we almost know that these athletes are either gonna win or come second already because the rivalry is not there and with the two big names out of the the the, the picture so to speak it's like all right none of these races mean anything really because the biggest names are not there and when they come back it's either they're injured why they are why they didn't win or we just don't know what's happening with them but if we see them continuously performing and then we see some junior athlete develop to the point where these athletes can challenge them and pass them and win consistently then we would have said all right the baton is being passed on to somebody else somebody else is doing a good job and we can start looking at another person and just accepting that all right you know what there's a decline in this person and there's an increase in this person but no right now we can't right now we have to just accept the fact that some athletes are out we don't know why we don't know how long they will be out and at some point you have to just say that hiding is the name of the game but the hiding is killing the sport to some extent it's killing the buzz it's killing the joy again i cannot fault any of the athletes who are making a decision for themselves because the strain that they are putting on their body and their reputation they deserve to be paid for it because it's a business overall and if you think about the media houses how much they are making from these athletes they are benefiting from it so the athletes should be the ones to benefit as well if you talk about the meat organizers they must be benefiting from this some way somehow is either the meat is growing to the point where it's it bring in bigger sponsors sponsors who will help them to see a return on their investment it is it could be where the big athletes coming in could help them to improve their standing you just there's just so much benefit that comes with being associated with the meat but for the athletes it's almost none and if you look at the, even the smaller athletes 
it's literally nothing that they get, they're getting nothing other than the opportunity to go out there and get the camera on them they run a race and if they're not in the top three nobody remember who they are unless you go back and you slowly pick through that video to see oh who came forth because only the top three matters as a result jimmy um athletics being a professional amateur event it is hurting them because it's hard to say that it's a professional event because there are no real rivalry you have to have a rival in a professional event where are the rivalries at the moment even if it's in jamaica jamaica with champs we know what we're gonna get from champs the, with all the different clubs popping up in jamaica they should be having a club championship a real club championship that call other athletes from other parts of the world to come and participate but again they need to have a financial backing they need to get the media houses involved or they need to create their own media house so that they can monetize it so they, the talent is just it have a shelf life and i think they should find a way to monetize because if this is their way of protesting it's very effective it's getting boring track and field is getting boring and the more the, the more it start to lose steam is the more the world will see that the athletes have power in their hand and they could lose an event if they don't take care of the athletes but then the, the, the flip side to that is that the athletes could lose their relevance because of their either their strategy or you know what you die a natural death because you're the injury killed the career you know what i mean we write the narrative like share subscribe